This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the tool to use to make a website for your brand or business. More about them in a bit. In Japan, there is a vast and calm forest, a sea made of green and silence, resting above wondrous caves where layers of ice have become pillars century after century. But in Japan, there is also a deep and dim maze of ancient trunks where one may easily lose their bearings and forfeit the will to return. These places are one and the same, Aokigahara, sadly known as the Suicide Forest. In today's Geographics episode, we're going to learn about the marvels, lore, and dark reputations surrounding this forest. Necessarily, we're going to be touching on issues concerning mental health, depression, and suicide. If these topics are particularly sensitive to you, maybe you want to skip this episode. If you or someone you know might be distressed by thoughts of suicide, you can ring the US National Suicide Prevention Line on 988, or if you're in the UK, you can call the Samaritans on 116 123. In Japan, you can reach TAL on 0357740992. There will also be a list of other support associations in the description below this video, and let's get into it. The Okigahara Forest is also known as Jukai, or the Sea of Trees, a perfectly fitting description. Today, we'll be using both of these terms interchangeably. Jukai is located in the Yamanashi Prefecture near the base of Mount Fuji, some 130 kilometers west of Yokohama, Japan. The forest occupies an area of 35 square kilometers, densely covered in conifers, broadleaf trees, and flowering plants. Many of these trees are 100 years old, stretching their towering trunks into a canopy so thick that only a gloomy, dim light can permeate from above. The forest floor is mostly made up of volcanic rock, a memento of lava left by the Fuji eruption of 864 AD. This all favored the growth of the luscious flora as well as a carpet of soft moss which quiets down any step which may disturb the peace of Jakai. A classic philosophical thought experiment wonders if a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it. Does it make a sound? It may be that when a tree falls in Aokigahara, no sound is heard, even when there are ears around. The silent environment is compounded by the nature of volcanic rock. Due to its porosity, it naturally absorbs sound. It is said to contribute to silence in another way. Its rich iron contents reportedly interfere with compasses, GPS systems, and mobile phone signals, forcibly setting annoying ringtones to silence. This claim has been partially contradicted by the Japanese Self-Defense Force, who regularly run training exercises in Aokigahara. Apparently, they had no issues with their military-grade compasses, but they admitted that commercially bought hardware may encounter problems. When soldiers are not around, this eerily peaceful environment is roamed by black bears, deers, boars, rabbits, as well as other mammal and avian species. Sure, there is another category of visitors which regularly marvel at the beauty of the Sea of Trees. Aokigahara is in fact a popular tourist location. Many sightseers enter the forest to enjoy a high far away from chaos or explore site, such as the Narasawa Ice Cave and the Vagaku Wind Cave. At its lowest point, the Narasawa reaches 21 meters underground and owes its name to it being a natural refrigerator. Over centuries, water droplets seeping through the ceiling froze into icicles, which gradually accumulated into pillars of ice, some over 30 meters high. Before the advent of electricity, the cave was used by locals to store their food supplies, which were kept cool by blocks of ice brought from nearby Mount Fuji. Visitors today can marvel at the sight of the blocks of icicles and pillars, all of them glowing like crystals. The Vagaku Wind Cave is another marvel, stretching for 201 meters of natural chambers, some up to 9 meters high. Like the Narasawa, this cave also benefits from a naturally cool microclimate with temperatures averaging 3 degrees Celsius all year round. Up until 1955, locals took advantage of the cold storage for seeds and valuable silkworm cocoons. Should you visit the Jakai Forest, the Japanese tourism agency recommends extra care. The floor is uneven and treacherous. It is even easy to lose one's bearing amongst the trees in a permanent state of twilight. The general rule is to stick to the designated trails and avoid the cordoned off areas. As an extra precaution, many visitors tie a rope painted in blue and white to the edge of a path before venturing amongst the vegetation. Certain areas of Aokigahara are in fact crisscrossed by these modern day Ariadne threads. For those who aren't familiar with the ancient myth of the Minotaur, the hero Theseus uses a thread provided by Princess Ariadne to navigate the labyrinth and slay the bull headed monster. The myth ends in a sour note as Theseus returns home. He fails to signal his victory by flying a white sail. His father, King Aegeus, believing him dead, commits suicide by diving into the sea. Unfortunately, the natural, historic, and spiritual beauty of Jakai is also darkened by a reputation it never sought, but forcibly accumulated over the years. That of a favorite destination for committing suicide. <laughs> 
The annual number of suicides committed within Aokigahara is disputed, and it's not easy to quantify. A clinical paper published in 1988 by Dr. Takahashi of the Yamanashi Medical College quotes an annual average of 30 suicides per year, a statistic confirmed by CNN in 2018. Since 2003, Japanese officials have stopped reporting on the number of suicide cases to avoid encouraging this trend. We came across an encouraging statistic from the Japanese police, however. In 2010, almost 80% of attempted suicides in the forest were prevented on time. The first historically recorded suicide in the forest was uh, the one committed by Shokai, a Buddhist monk, in 1340 AD. But this was a peculiar type of self-immolation. Shokai was practicing a religious ritual called Neojo. According to this practice, a monk would pray while fasting inside a cave as a means to save people from their sins. The monk would continue praying and avoiding nourishment, slowly fading out of existence. Some sources also claim that Shokai was a place to enact Ubisute, a tradition where the elderly in a community would hide in an isolated spot waiting to die. This was an act of self-sacrifice to avoid being a burden for their families. The forest may also have been a place where poor families would abandon their babies or elderly relatives in times of severe famine. So it seems that Jukai was a place of self-immolation since at least the 14th century AD. In the 20th century, its notoriety surged after the publication of two works. The first was the novel Nami no To, or Tower of Waves, by Seicho Matsumoto. The story centers around a beautiful, love-torn heroine who decides to end her own life inside the Sea of Trees. The popularity of the novel prompted several Japanese citizens to travel from far and away to commit suicide in the same area. Aikigahara was mentioned again in the 1993 book The Complete Manual of Suicide, written by Wataru Tsurumi. Tsurumi describes Jukai as the perfect place to die and even provides directions to the best spots for a body never to be found. Following the popularity of this manual, several bodies were found in the forest. But I should mention that it has not been ascertained if the book actually contributed to a rise in Japan's suicide rate. Speaking of which, as of 2022, Japan's suicide rate is 15.3 cases per 100,000 citizens, the 25th highest rate worldwide. Its current population is just short of 124 million, meaning there are almost 19,000 people committing suicide every year. Now let me quickly jump in here to tell you about today's fantastic sponsor, our longtime friends over at Squarespace. Look, you've heard me talk about Squarespace before probably many, many times, and honestly, if you're building a website anywhere else in 2022, I might wonder what you're doing and I might think you're a bit insane, because Squarespace have all the tools you could ever need to build a website and they make it ridiculously easy. All you have to do is head over to squarespace.com and from there what you do is you browse through their templates. Not only that, but they'll help you narrow down what template you want. They'll ask you a little survey, like, what's your website about? And you might say, I am a photographer. And they'll be like, well, have you seen these templates? And you'll be like, I, I have now, and this one is beautiful, and that's what I want. And then you click on it, and then it's all generic. There's Laura Mipson in there, there's random pictures, but it looks great. And then what you do is you swap it out with your own pictures, you swap it out with your own text. Maybe you add an extra page here or there. Maybe even sell your services. Maybe even sell products. You can also do that with Squarespace. Look, it really is just the only place that you should be building a website. And then once you've got your site set up, there's loads of extra features. Maybe pop a little email form on your site being like, continuing the photographer example, interested in my photography services? Enter your email here and I'll be in touch. Boom. Easy. Bring in that business. And of course, they cover all of the basics like analytics, blogging, etc. There really isn't a better place. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash geographics to save 10% off a website or a domain. And now back to today's video. These figures may not appear surprising in a country known for seppuku, but beyond stereotypes, suicide is a serious concern to health authorities, as it is the leading cause of death in men aged 20 to 44 and women between 15 and 34. Japanese men are actually twice as likely to kill themselves compared to the female population. According to Karen Nakamura, a professor of anthropology at the University of California, Berkeley, a contributing factor to the high rate amongst men is the social stigma around receiving mental health care. Other risk factors include the pressure of academic achievement, depression, consequences of divorce, overwork, financial struggles, 
and unemployment. This latter trend was especially prevalent in the years that followed the economic crisis of the late 1990s and the collapse of Lehman Brothers Bank in 2008. A middle-aged man who lost his livelihood in the subsequent economic downturn, simply identified as Taro, bought a one-way ticket to Aokigahara and walked into the silent greenery to end his life. Once lost deep in the green sea, Taro cut his wrists and awaited for the end to come. His wounds were not fatal, but he collapsed from blood loss and he almost died from dehydration, frostbite and starvation. Luckily, he was rescued by a hiker just in time. Later, Taro declared to CNN, My will to live disappeared. I'd lost my identity, so I didn't want to live on this earth. That's why I went there. In recent years, the Yamanashi prefectural government has taken several steps to prevent others like Taro from reaching their final destination. For example, local authorities have placed CCTV cameras to the entrance of Jakai to monitor those who walk inside and keep track if they take too long to emerge again safely. The borders of the forest have also been marked with signs bearing messages like your life is a precious gift from your parents or don't agonize over problems yourself please seek counseling as well as hotline numbers offering support finally the prefecture has raised the height of bridge rails increased police presence and trained some of the tour guides on how to discourage potential suicide visitors this latter tactic has proved successful in discouraging suicide in several cases but far too often these volunteers arrive too late for example tour guide toro kurahara had the misfortune of discovering 36 bodies over a period of just 37 days. But most of the Yamanashi officials' efforts are focused at preventing Jakai from becoming a destination for so called dark tourism or the search of thrills related to a place with a haunted reputation or a violent history. Unfortunately, Aoki Gahara has had its unfair share of visitors driven by morbid motivations. There are recorded incidents of tourists searching for the bodies and belongings of those who committed suicide there to the point of collecting macabre souvenirs such as nooses used for hangings. We have already discussed how Aoki Gahara's notoriety as a preferred location for suicides was established by two published works, but this may not fully explain the magnetism exerted on those who wish to end it all. Local law has provided some explanations which venture into the supernatural. Some Buddhist monks have erected altars in the forest as a means to combat the evil spirits haunting the forest. According to them, these spirits are responsible for drawing people into Jakai to commit suicide. One of these monks, Kiyomyo Fuku, told the New Zealand Herald, the spirits are calling people here to kill themselves. The spirits of the people who have committed suicide before. If we piece together some of the elements we covered today, we could venture the following explanation. As stated earlier, since the 14th century, the forest was chosen as a spot for Nyojo, or ritual self-immolation, and Ubisute, the practice by which elderly people sacrifice themselves for the good of the community. According to Japanese folklore, their souls may have returned as yurei. These are the ghosts of those who died in a quick and violent manner, or who perished before the proper funeral rites were performed. Naturally, the bodies of suicide victims may remain undetected for months lost in the vegetation. Some may never be recovered, as their remains are slowly consumed by the elements or scavenging animals. Yurei are said to roam the place where they died, creating unexplained sounds and lights or invoking powerful curses against the living. According to Buddhist monk Kiyomo Fuku, it may be the Yurei who call for the living to travel into Jakai and kill themselves, thus perpetuating the string of suicides within the forest. In fact, it is no surprise that Aoki Gahara is a reputedly haunted place. Visitors have often reported hearing unnatural, blood-curdling screams beneath the canopy. One of these witnesses was a writer for the Japan Times, who allegedly once heard a terrifying wail deep within the vegetation. As he investigated the source of the noise, he found a dead male body lying by a tree. The man appeared to have been dead for quite some time, hence he could not have screamed. Maybe it was the Urai. Or more realistically, the screams heard within Aoki Gahara belong to one of the many species of birds who harmlessly live there, blissfully unaware of the worries of the human realm. Without bothering the souls of those who died, a more rational approach to solving the mystery of Jakai would be to simply ask those who lived. The already quoted Dr. Takahashi took exactly this approach. In 1988, he interviewed three survivors of attempted suicide. The goal of his paper was to investigate the condition of psychogenic amnesia following attempted suicide, but along the way, he questioned his subjects about their peculiar choice of location. Once they had recovered from their past memories, all three subjects reported they had chosen Jakai because they wanted to die without being noticed. Subject 1, a 21-year-old man, declared, I don't want to bother anybody or be bothered by anybody. Subject 2, a 26-year-old woman, said, Others would be better off without me. All I want is to die alone, successfully and quietly. Subject 3, a 46-year-old man, said that all he really wanted was to rest forever. 
The emerging theme is that these patients wanted to die alone, quietly, restfully, far from the world, in a place where their bodies may never be found. According to Dr. Takahashi, Japanese society is a shame culture, whereby good behavior or sin are regulated by external sanctions, the gaze of the community, and the judgment of others. The same principle applies to those who wish to commit suicide. They want to end their lives in a place where they may never be judged, either as a person about to end it or as a motionless body. And what better place than one of the most luscious and impenetrable forests in all of Japan? Dr. Takahashi points to another cause for Eihuhara's bleak popularity, and that's popularity itself. Novels, manuals, news reports, and even horror movies have perpetuated the myth of Jukai as an arboreal labyrinth where those who will it will find a peaceful, even beautiful death. In recent years, Ekigahara was in the news again following the visit of YouTuber Logan Paul in January 2018. The popular content creator filmed a segment about Jukai with the goal of investigating its alleged haunting. After some shots of Mount Fuji, which he refers to as Fiji, Logan is shown bantering with his collaborators before walking into the forest. As they roam the sea of trees, he and his crew are startled by a grim discovery of the body of a suicide victim. The video ends with further shots of the YouTuber as he drinks sake and engages playfully with his fans. Paul did include a suicide prevention message in his video, addressing the issues of mental health, and later issued an apology video. Later still, he admitted that the tone he used in the video was a horrible lapse in judgment. However, the overall tone of the segment was perceived as disrespectful by most commentators, including local authorities. What's worse, the high viewership of his channel worried the local prefecture that his video may contribute to a rise in suicides. In his paper, Dr. Takahashi points out, A suicidal ideation and sympathy toward other suicides exist subconsciously among people who are at high risk of suicide. Such reports of suicide may trigger others, since many researchers have pointed out the role of suggestion of infectiousness in suicide. In today's world, we don't need a vengeful spirit, a uri, to perpetuate the chain of self-immolation, for we are the uri. So, let me ask again if a tree falls in the forest and... No one is around to hear it. It doesn't make a sound, since our opinion is that yes, yeah, it does. But other trees, plants, animals, even those far removed who directly or indirectly cared for it or benefited from it, will certainly suffer from the silence it left behind. We'll admit that yes, we are the Uri, even Dr. Takahashi, perhaps indirectly as one. But we also feel it is important to address certain issues, to educate, to inform, and if possible, to prevent the worst from happening. Each one of us has a monster a minotaur waiting for us. Most of us are certainly no heroes, unlike Theseus, but just like him, we all certainly need and have someone who can help us by giving us a thread to hold onto so that we don't lose our bearings in our quest within the labyrinth. In Japan, there's a vast and calm forest, a sea of green and peace, tarnished by tragedy. The tragedy of those whose bodies lie motionless on a carpet of ancient lava, and of moss, the tragedy of those who will never see them or hear them again, and the tragedy of those brave guides who are willing to offer a kind word to the desperate and have to discover new bodies each day. In Japan, there is a deep and dim maze of ancient trunks waiting to be discovered. If you've decided to walk into those shadows, make sure you've grabbed one end of the thread.